student at home. My name is Phoebe Sukayai, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education, Kaduna State. Welcome to our program, radio television program, e-learning. During this period of staying at home because of corona virus, it is expected that we will we'll be able to reach out to you so that we'll be able to understand that learning has no stopping space. Because of this program, throughout this period, we will be reaching out to you using all our various subjects to ensure that you learn something within this period. Bearing in mind that immediately after this crisis, you will be launching into writing your exams. We want you to come out with good grades, and therefore it is expected that you pay absolute attention. Your teachers will always be on air, pay attention, get down all your questions where you have gray areas and reach out to them based on your various subjects. Your teachers on air will give you their names, their telephone numbers that you can always reach out to them and ask the various questions that you need clarifications. So that subsequently, you will be able to get clarity on where you have problems. Kaduna State Government, under the able leadership of Malam Ahmed El Rufai, is doing everything possible to ensure that our students continue with their lessons no matter the circumstances. On this, I will request all of you and your parents, your guidance, your neighbors, your friends to pay attention to all the various segments that will be rolling out to you through these programs. Thank you very much and happy viewing. My name is Kude Bainta Mercy. I welcome you to the e-learning on English language on air. Today, we are going to talk specifically on words. Why do we need words in the language class, particularly English language? Every aspect of the English language is built from words. When you talk of lexis and structure, you need words to build up. When you talk of vocabulary, you need words as it concerns different fields of, of endeavor. When you talk of figures of speech, you need words. When you talk of idiomatic expressions, you need words. Put it anyhow in the English language syllables, you need words. Which means words are very important in, in building the English language structure. With this, my viewers, I will take you on a note through the parts of speech of the English language. Please come with me. The parts of speech in the English language is a group to which words are assigned in accordance to their syntactic function. All languages have words as their building blocks. All these words that build a language, English language included, can be grouped into eight different boxes known as parts of speech. The first one is the noun. As we all know, the noun is a name. It could be a name as in Abdul, as in Kaduna, as in Lion, Judgment, or Table. It is followed by a pronoun, as represented in he, she, it, him, her, and his. Then we have the adjective, which is in form of kind, full, beautiful, rich, and blind. We have also the determiners, V as in the article, A, and an. Verbs are also part of it. We have the verb tense as in went, we have slapped, we have pushed, and we have jumped. Adverbs are also part of this, as in quickly, slowly, quietly, smartly, and briefly. Prepositions are also part of this page. We have on, in, under, besides, between, and behind. We have conjunctions. 
and while, unless, yet, although, because. Now, we'll take these parts of speech one after the other. We'll begin by explaining what a noun is. Nouns are naming words. It is not enough to simply define them as we have in the past. In the past, you hear people define a noun as the name of a person, animal, place, or thing. The noun is more than this, as there are a host of other words that are not the category stated and yet are nouns, such as judgment, nation, intention, ability, adoration, advantage, death, dishonesty, divorce, dream, friendship, loneliness, sleep. Kinds of nouns. There are different kinds of nouns, ranging from proper nouns, abstract nouns. We have the common nouns, the collective nouns, concrete nouns. Then we have the countable and uncountable nouns. We'll move on to functions of nouns. While these are the different kinds of nouns we have, their functions is what concerns us the most. Nouns can function as, along with other pronouns, noun can function as the subject of a sentence, which means the noun as a subject of the sentence is the head of the sentence. They can function as the object of the verb. They can also function as an indirect object of a verb. A noun can also function as the object of a preposition. They can also function as the complete complement of the subject. Examples of nouns in sentences. A. Laddie went to school yesterday. In this sentence, noun laddie is the subject of the sentence. B. Laddie bought her father a car. A car in sentence B is an indirect object. C. He bought his mother a house. What did he buy his mother? He bought her a house. So that is our direct object. D. Abdul is in school. What is the object there? School is the object of a preposition in. E. We have James is a doctor. Doctor is the complement of the verb James. We have an assignment here. State the grammatical function of the underlined nouns. One, Ladi bought her father a house. B, Ibrahim bought his father a cow. D, the books are on the shelf. Four, Rabbi slapped Suli. D, Abdul went to school. My viewers at home, I leave you with this assignment. You work on the assignment, get the right answers, and we'll continue from there in our next lesson after Mr. Emmanuel Jato will come in for a review. Thank you very much. Hello, viewers. Mr. Emmanuel Jato here, an English teacher as well. You've heard uh, my colleague make a very wonderful presentation on part of speech. I am here only to make a review. She has given you the definition of the part of speech. She has also given the various uh, items that constitute the different parts of speech, beginning from the noun, the pronoun, the adjective, determiner, verb, adverb, preposition, and conjunction. She has also made a very beautiful, she has also given a very beautiful definition of the noun, which is different from what you used to know before. Your former definition of the noun, which we normally hear in class, is that the noun is the, is, is, is the name of a person, animal, place, or thing. But we've come to understand that nouns are more than that. 
there are, uh, there are aspects of the nouns which are not captured in that, in that very particular definition. Therefore, she has given you some of them as words like judgment, nation, intention, ability, adoration, advantage, death, dishonesty, divorce, dream, friendship, loneliness, sleep. Now, we also know that there are different kinds of nouns. Proper noun, abstract noun, common noun, collective nouns, concrete noun, countable and uncountable noun. We know you know all these. That is why we are not going into details as to giving you the definition of each one of them and their types, and, their, and, and the types of words they constitute. The basic thing we want you to get is the function of the noun. Nouns have five different functions. One, along with pronouns, they can function as the subject of a sentence. They can also function as the object of a verb. They can as well function as the object of a preposition. They can also be direct object, and they, are, they can also be indirect object. Examples of noun. Laddie went to school yesterday. The noun there is Laddie. Laddie there is functioning as the subject of the sentence. B, Ladi bought her father a car. The item, the reason why her father is indirect is because he is the recipient of the car, not the item that was bought. C, he bought his mother a house. The house is the thing that is given the mother. Therefore, it is the direct object, not the mother. D. Abdul is in school. School is the object, but it is the object of a preposition, not the direct object of a verb. E. James is a doctor. Your object there is, do your complement there is doctor. Because if you ask the question, who is the doctor, you, you, the answer you get is James. What is James? He is a doctor. Now this brings us to an entirely new topic, sentences. We want to know what the sentence is by definition. We want to know what constitutes the different categorization of sentences. Well, first we begin with how to define a sentence. A sentence is simply defined or simply refers to a group of words that express a complete thought. Sentences begin with capital letters and end with a punctuation mark. There are, broadly speaking, two kinds of sentences, and they are listed below. One, functional sentences. And we have structural sentences. We take functional sentences for now. Now, these are sentences that are classified according to the kind of work that they do or the kind of function they perform. Now, looked at this way, there are four different kinds of sentences, and they are listed as follows. Statutory sentences, interrogatory sentences, exclamatory sentences, and obligatory sentences statutory sentences. Now these are statements of facts. They are sentences that simply pass information and come in various shapes and sizes such as people die, birds fly, Audu kicked the ball, Rabbi is a doctor, the woman with the red dress carrying a baby on her back ran across the road. The class made Rabi a prefect. Abdul bought his father a car. Mike went to school yesterday. Yesterday, Mike left for school. 
She sings. She sings well. Neither the students or nor their teacher is here. The rich also cry. Interrogatory sentences. These are simply sentences that come in the form of questions. They ask questions. These sentences are as follows. What is your name? Where are you going? When are we leaving? Which of these is yours? Who asked you to sit? We are leaving for Lagos tomorrow, aren't we? We are not going to, to Lagos tomorrow, are we? Is she leaving? John is coming. Now you take note. The last sentence. If it is not properly taken, it, it will be a statement. But with the right accentuation, it becomes a question. Obligatory sentences. Now these are sentences that come in the form of commands. They give directives which are meant to be obeyed. For example, please shut the door as you leave. Shut all windows. Get out of here. On bottles, you'll find this kind of instruction. Twist to open. Pass me the salt, please. A father to his son or daughter. Now, if the same person is going to make this same request to his superior, the nature of the question changes. He would say, would you mind passing me the salt, please? That is, if he is making a request from his superior. On bottles, you find, shake well before use. Now, this includes instructions on all manuals of gadgets that show you how to operate them. Exclamatory sentences. Now, these forms of sentences show their speaker's feelings. These feelings could be those of anger, pleasure, pain, happiness, etc. They are normally accompanied by punctuation marks, as you can see on the screen. For example, wow, what a beautiful dress. Ouch, this is painful. Oh, what a poor boy. Hmm, so sweet. Mm-hmm, what can I do for you? Now you'll note that all of these come with exclamation marks accompanying them. But take note that the following sentences commonly seen on adverts shown on screen or billboards are wrong. Where you have one exclamation mark accompanied by another one with two and then the next one with three. This is wrong on account of the fact that multiple exclamation marks are used instead of one at the end of the word meeting. Do not copy such errors. Purpose for teaching of sentences. One, we teach this because we've noticed that in, in, in the exams we mark, neko or waek, the pattern of your sentences are always the same. They bore the teacher that marked them. So, when you use all the kind of sentences we have, we have treated above, your essays or the letters you write will be very interesting to read. So, one, we teach this so that you don't bore the persons marking your script with monotonous chain of simple sentences. Two, to make your essays and letters beautiful and sweet to read. Three, to show you, to show you have mastery over the language you are using. And four, it frees and gladdens the examiner and as such, he freely gives you more marks. Assignment. 
Now, there are four kinds of sentences according to function. Write five each for each kind. Two, state the kind of sentences these are. Number one, wow, what a sweet looking car. Number two, Michael passed his exams. Number three, to whom were you speaking? Number four, shut the door after you. Now, before our next lesson, read as much as you can on structural sentences. Now, this concludes my part of the lesson today. My colleague, Ms. Hassanah Toering, will continue from here. Thank you. Good day, viewers and students at home. I want to make a quick review of what Mr. Ima has taught on sentences. As he had said, a sentence simply refers to a group of words that express a complete thought. That is to say that we have incomplete and complete sentences. But for a sentence to be complete, it has to express a complete thought. So sentences begin with capital letters and end with punctuation, that is full stop, or question mark, or exclamation mark, and the rest. So we have two, as he has said, functional sentences and structural sentences. He went on to explain about the functional sentences. We have four of them, which is statutory sentences, interrogatory sentences, obligatory sentences, and exclamatory sentences. On the issue of statutory um, sentences, it's just like statements made. That is the reason why he said, people die, birds fly, how do kick it the ball, Rabbi is a doctor, the woman with the red dress carrying a baby on her back ran across the road. The class made, made Rabi a prefect. Abdul bought his father a car. If you notice, they all end with full stops. So they are just like statements. Interrogatory sentences. These are sentences that ask questions. Have you ever thought of being taken to a police station? You are being interrogated. What they are trying to get from you is just to get information. That is basically what interrogative sentences are. Like, what is your name? Meaning, they want to get information of what your name is. Where are you going? When are we leaving? Which of these is yours? Who asked you to sit? It is asking questions. Obligatory sentences. These are sentences that come in form of commands. They give directives and are meant to be obeyed. That is why it is command. Shut all the windows, get out of here. It demands you to obey what is told for you to do. Exclamatory sentences. These forms of sentences show their speaker's feelings. They are feelings of anger, pleasure, pain. They are usually followed by exclamatory marks. That is the reason why the first sentence says, wow, what a beautiful dress. Ouch, this is painful. Oh, what a poor boy. Hmm, so sweet. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? They are all exclamatory. So the purpose of um, teaching of sentences is to make your work readable. And when you are writing these sentences, you must take note to make your essays and letters beautiful and sweet to read. And to show you how you have the mastery over the language and it frees and gladdens the examiner and as such he freely gives you more marks. So on this note, we come to the end of this section. We hope to meet again in the next lesson and we hope to see more of your questions. If you have questions, you have them ready.